A new commandment I give you, said Jesus, that you love one another. The Latin word for commandment is mandatum, mandatum. And it's from this word mandatum that we get our word mondi. And it's because uh, of this reading from John's Gospel that today is called Maundy Thursday. We might uh, in English call it Commandment Thursday, as we are commanded to love one another. When I was a boy, I collected coins. I used to ask my mum to go to the bank and bring back bags full of coins, and then I would sort through them, trying to find uh, a coin of every date. So if you remember the 12 sided threepenny bits, you remember the gold threepenny bits? I have one of those for every date they were minted. And the same with many other uh, of the coins no longer in circulation. Upstairs somewhere I have a box which um, is really heavy <laughs> sitting on the floor, full of all the coins I collected as a boy. And so Maundy Thursday always used to have a certain interest for me because uh, Maundy Thursday is the day when the Queen gives out the Maundy money. But I've never actually seen a set of Maundy coins, specially minted coins, for her to give out on this day. Until now, that is, because, uh, as you may have read in News from the Villages, our church warden at Etchinswell, Stanford Drake, um, was this year chosen by the Queen to receive a set of the Maundy money. And Stanford says he's going to bring it with him to St. Lawrence on Easter Day. So uh, those of us who are there will be able to see it um, and congratulate him on uh, having that honour from the Queen. Sadly, he couldn't receive the money directly from the Queen this year, but um, it has been sent to him. Why does the Queen give out Maundy money? Well, it is simply in lieu of washing feet. For hundreds of years, the monarchs in this country would wash the feet of paupers on Maundy Thursday uh, in remembrance of uh, our Lord's action at the Last Supper when he washed the feet of his disciples. But somewhere uh, along uh, the road, it was changed from washing feet uh, to giving out Maundy money. Either way, it's a reminder to the monarch that however uh, high and mighty you are, you are called by Jesus to be a servant of others. And our own queen, of course, is a wonderful example of being a servant to her people. This passage from John's Gospel is, in fact, probably my favourite passage in the whole Bible. And I often use it uh, in all sorts of situations. I was speaking to the children at school about it uh, only yesterday. I took four assemblies and uh, was explaining to them about the foot washing. I use it at weddings quite a bit to explain to couples that there is more uh, to love than romance. That love is about seeing the needs of others and doing something about it. Love is about serving each other. One of the greatest examples of love in action in our lifetimes was surely Mother Teresa. She gave her life to lifting the dying and the destitute out of the gutter in Calcutta. At times, literally, to enable them simply to die with dignity. And she said that she treated everyone as though it was Christ she was caring for. She also inspired many hundreds of others who are part of her order today. The Sisters of Charity number over 4,500 uh, at this point and are working in over 133 countries. I've seen their work firsthand in the slums of Nairobi when I was there in Kenya, working with the poorest of the poor. So Jesus calls us on this day 
to be servants of one another. The question for us must surely be, how seriously are we going to take this to heart? How ready are we to serve each other? What if it costs us to serve one another? How ready are we to follow Jesus' example? For Jesus, of course, his love cost him his life. He died for us. How ready are we to put aside our power and our pride and to get our hands dirty? I think one of the reasons that Pope Francis is so popular is that he drives around in an ordinary car and he refuses to live in the Vatican State Apartments. He comes across as not wanting to lord it over others, but to be their servant. When I was a curate, I did many evening services where I interviewed members of our congregation. And after interviewing them, I would ask them if there was a, a hymn or a song they would like us to sing. It was all worked out in advance, of course, but um, I would ask them if there was a song. And in nearly every service that I did where I was interviewing people, somebody would choose the song, The Servant King. There is something about the servanthood of Jesus that really appeals to people. I wonder, did it ever occur to you that when Jesus knelt to wash his disciples' feet, he also washed the feet of Judas Iscariot, even though he knew that Judas would betray him. His love was such that he washed the feet of his betrayer. There is really something about the servanthood of Jesus that appeals. The question is, are we prepared to be servants too? A new commandment I give you, our Lord said, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this will everyone know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Lord, give us grace, we pray, to follow your example and to be servants of one another. We ask this in your name. Amen.